Essentially, Black RVA is a space that lives online where you can visit, see all the black owned businesses, restaurants, events, and history spaces in Richmond. To know that one in four Americans have roots in Richmond. Mm got to come back here and experience the way that we've embraced our ancestors, our culture from art, education, um, food, sports, everything we have our hands on in this city. It's just so much to kind of take in when you're here, but when you leave, you're definitely going to leave fulfilled and you want more. We got a place for you to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we can tell you where to stay. We can give you entertainment. We can give you all of that while you are still celebrating your history and know that you belong here. It's really a grassroots effort and it's in that reason it's very authentic and it resonates with travelers. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Tell people what is Black RVA. All right. <laughs> uh, Black RVA is uh, a way for people to find the history and current culture of um, Black Richmond and what's happening in, in Richmond mm -hmm. um, in a seamless and straightforward way. So essentially Black RVA is a space that lives online where you can visit, see all the black owned businesses, restaurants, events, and history spaces in Richmond and straightforwardly go visit them and go engage in, in what's going on um, in the African American community in Richmond. Okay. okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a tourism campaign. So the idea is to shine a spotlight on all the things Josh mentions to invite people to Richmond just to see for themselves and to really help travelers know that Richmond is a welcoming, cool <laughs> place that has an awesome um, and vibrant African-American community and a lot of cool people that are doing amazing things here. To know that one in four Americans have roots in Richmond. Mm got to come back here and experience the way that we've embraced our ancestors, our culture from art, education, um, food, sports, everything we have our hands on in this city. And what a better way to showcase it to the rest of the world than to create Black RBA. Absolutely. And, and Black RBA also, I think, comes to life in um, the tagline that we've created, which is rooted in rising. Yeah. So. Rooted and Rising really captures the idea that we are rooted here, to Kelly's point, one in four black people in America can trace their ancestry back to this space. Um, so we are very rooted in our history, but we are also rising, you know, entrepreneurs and, and people who are doing incredible um, cultural experiences like Africana Independent Film Festival, for, for an example. Um, we are rising um, in a new in a new way in Richmond. Once the <laughs> the capital of the Confederacy, now much more uh, a, a capital of culture. Um. Mm -hmm. okay. um, well, Richmond, for that very reason, is very unique because, um, as on the website, so you get gateway to Black culture. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking about that rooted and rising piece. You know, once the capital of the Confederacy, the capital of the state of Virginia, mm -hmm. um, the That's gateway for the, both the past and present, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. Um, speak to that and just how important it is to just really showcase that. Oh, you yeah, you feel it. People. Yeah, you, I mean, you feel it. Some of the buildings around here mm -hmm. still have traces of our enslaved ancestors. Okay. Jackson Ward. Harlem of the South, where some of the first blacks became millionaires. Um, you know, Jackson Ward chose me. I walked <laughs> into this building and I knew from the jump that Maggie Walker, Bilbo Jangles Robinson, um, I, could, I wish I could name them all, have stepped in this building. And they gave me the blessing to open up a space where not only we feel safe um, with conversation, with mm. thought, 
um, with all of the things that make us who we are. Um, and so I think that is very important to not only Richmonders, but also to travelers to, we're gonna tell you about what's happening on Monument Avenue, what's happening over um, with our state government, but then we're gonna bring you into the deep rooted history of Jackson Ward and, um, and uh, uh, Blackwell and Fulton and Churchill in the East End. Um, it's just so much to kind of take in when you're here, but when you leave, you're definitely going to leave fulfilled and you want more. Like you can't get it all at one time. Right. We got, we got a place for you to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we could tell you where to stay. We could give you entertainment. We could give you all of that while you are still celebrating your history and know that you belong here. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, this is also uh, black RVA, BLK RVA, um, is also in a long line of initiatives or movements that have enabled us to know where we can go, yes. know where is safe for us, and know that we can still be uh, supported, um, surrounded by culture, surrounded by community. I mean, you think about you know the Negro Motorist Green Book, right? Mm -hmm. And how that was a guide for people during segregation or, you know, during uh, the early 20th century where, you know, it led people to where they could find community, right? And safety and, and safe haven. And I think, you know, Black RVA is in that legacy, is in that legacy of finding space, not only now for us, you know, to find where we can be comfortable and, and where, you know, people are building businesses who look like us, but also for everyone else as well, mm -hmm. for, for the fact that, you know, you can find us because we're building beautiful things mm. because we are uh, the epitome of black excellence in the city. And that is, you know, I think um, it's a it's a new day, but I think it's it's a step in a long it's a long legacy and a long path that we've been walking. And I think one of the reasons it's so powerful is it's very community driven. Yeah. The whole black RVA concept, the idea of this is there have been dozens of people in the community that have worked on this and a really core action team of folks that Josh was on with another n number of others. and. It's really a grassroots effort, and it's so, and that reason it's more, very authentic, and it mm. resonates with travelers. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that I saw on the website that really speaks to the intentionality of Black RBA is that page about our lexicon. Yeah. Break down, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many a conversation on that. Versus black yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. It's slave versus slavery. Mm -hmm. The true meaning of urban, which spoke to me because I call myself an urban culture and lifestyle enthusiast, and meaning... I love urban city, city. Yeah. city. Me metropolitan <laughs> areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so there was a much there was much conversation around, around having that page and those mm. descriptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. Um, so, uh, you know who is a person who is very much not here right now is Anjali Moon, yeah. who um, was the chairman of our chairwoman, should I say, of uh, this this initiative, um, and. Early on, we started talking about um, what, how, how we should, how we should call these spaces and this this initiative. And when we talk about our friends who own mm -hmm. businesses in Richmond, we're just like these are black spaces, mm -hmm. and that that naturally comes, you know, to to how how we speak about it. But we we said, you know, when we talk to other folks, there is this difference of African American yeah. or black or you know some of the some of the ways that folks can get tripped up with l language and myself I'm a writer and a, a branding person and so as we talked about this we were we were thinking we should define these things mm -hmm. because we don't say them haphazardly right we don't say black versus Af African American in in you know, sort of a casual way. It is, it is uh, intentional. Mm -hmm. And so code we, switching. It, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we didn't want to code switch. Yeah. We wanted to be fully ourselves, mm -hmm. fully how we, how we are. And so putting that out there says, Hey, this is how we're thinking about it. It also says, um, in Richmond, we have a point of view, right? This isn't just, you know, us out here trying to, you know, replicate something else it is it is us it is authentically you know where we're coming from and we'll tell you about it yeah. Yeah. and because the city has so much racial divide mm. sometimes people are so scared of words <laughs> you know we started um virginia black restaurant experience because we wanted to focus on black ownership in the hospitality industry and we said black 
for a reason. Um, you know, we're not afraid of that word. We embrace that word. Um, that's 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 in our culture. That's how we feel. Um, and so having those different definitions and, and being okay with however you want to use those words um, was, was a great tool, but also made people comfortable to use them. Don't be afraid of the word black. Yeah. And, and you know, words have always mattered yeah. in race in America, yeah. right? I mean, words have been the definition of how we have um, define the spaces that folks exist in. You think of signs that used to say colored. You mm -hmm. think of signs that used to say white. Yeah, you know, we, we've used language um, to hide racism. You think about language like states' rights mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So words have always mattered. Um, and so in, in this space, especially when we're talking about an inclusive and, and broad spectrum way to get folks to engage with the black culture in Richmond, we thought we would put words up front and, and, and indicate that, that words matter to us as well. So it's powerful. Well, I see what you're doing as a site and it's a good case study for other metropolitan areas throughout the country to create their own you know, black cultural hub of a website where people can go for tourism information and just to learn more about, okay, well, we know there's this larger thing, you know, about whatever, whatever the city is, but we can drill down even more. Mm -hmm. So what would you want people to think of, one, when they think of Black RBA? When they hear the name Black RBA, what do they, what you want them to think of? Kelly. Um, <laughs> I want them to think of... Um, pretty much ancestors, culture, history, love, um, you know, just it, 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 this feeling in your gut that kind of comes out of you when, I mean, I smile every time I see it and I hear it. Um, it brings me joy. Um, I want people to come to Richmond more so to see what we have done. Um, Stop thinking of Richmond, Virginia in whatever mind you put it in 20 years ago. We are a different city that is being controlled primarily by black leadership. And that is extremely important. You, you, you made a good point about other places to follow. I do think DC, Atlanta, Charlotte, some parts of Chicago, could con they are black, <laughs> but have they you know, organized and made an app and made it inviting mm -hmm. for people to come to visit. Yes, I know to go to those places. Right. I don't know if I know where to go all the time when I get there. And there may be a different mindset that the city is trying to put out there. So I applaud the city of Richmond um, for just taking ownership in the fact that we need to celebrate these spaces, these people, these thoughts, these ideas, mm -hmm. and we need other people to come visit while they're visiting everything else in the city. Yeah, and I, I, I would say that there, uh, if, if other cities are looking to Richmond in this thing that we've created, Black RVA, and asking themselves, could we do something similar? Could, does that have a space where we live? I think this initiative proves that organizations that are oriented around tourism, like the Richmond Region Tourism, um, and community members can collaborate, yeah. can bring together their you know, differing points of view, their differing motivations, and align on something that actually helps everyone, that enables everyone. And some of the um, conversations that we had throughout this process um, talked about some of those long-standing hindrances and obstacles that often come in front of initiatives like this. Um, and one of them was, you know, how do we maintain it? How do we not yeah. just have a initiative that has a great launch yeah. day, but then fails on everything else moving forward? And so we had those tough conversations. Where is that money coming from? How do we make sure that this is ongoing? Um, and we could, you know, please reach out and we could talk about that in, you know, in the DM. But, but, but um, you know, I, we solved those problems. We found ways to figure that out. And so I think it is, um, it is a, a sign of hope that, you know, municipalities and people who represent municipalities and the community can actually successfully work together and make great things happen.
Yeah, and I think what's so interesting about this too, to your point on sustainability, is that this is just the beginning. We have had a great launch we, at the launch party. I'll never forget it when we viewed the video. Everyone cheered, show it again, show it again. <laughs> I've never experienced that in my 17 year tourism career to see something so well received. It was amazing. Yeah. And so we intentionally have rolled this out in our community first because we want the community to love it before we roll it out to the world and people come here and say, you know, Very people important. don't even know what it is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're in that phase now mm -hmm. and this is a long game. Now, Richmond Region Tourism has a reputation and a history of long investment in LGBT outreach and other outreach. And we are, we're in this for the long haul, but it is evolving. Um, so, you know, what it is today, it might be different later. Where, where we go with it remains to be seen. But the great part is that everybody's still at the table and committed to moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think what you speak to, Catherine, um, is is really important to sort of call out which is that in a diverse community you have to represent the fullness of that community so you mentioned you know the fact that L, L, you know you've done work with um, lgbt you know the community and uh and in a variety of ways you know the uh the folks that you we actually have in Richmond, Virginia represent a diverse mm -hmm. group of people and so you can't just think about travel to this city through one lens, yeah. through a white lens, through a male lens, through, you know, even, you know, just a black lens. You mm -hmm. have to see it in, in its full spectrum. And so I think that's what's brilliant about what uh, Richmond Region Tourism has done with this initiative is to say, we want people to engage with this community on all of its levels in every sort of capacity. And so um, tapping into that through Black RVA, I think is, is a great um, you know initiative and a, and a great effort to represent the city in its fullness. And the other thing to think about really quickly is that um, Richmond Region Tourism is a regional tourism effort, so it's the city and the surrounding right. jurisdictions, and they have all been at the table for this. So while there might be a concentration of assets in the city, we have uncovered a lot of things that we didn't know about. Mm. Maybe they were under mm. the radar in some of our neighboring jurisdictions. Mm. And so this is truly a way for businesses that are not necessarily in the heart of downtown but are still black owned to benefit from this program. So we want to make sure that we're regional. Yeah. Yeah. As this is growing, my DM keeps going off, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's from people from other cities, other states, because they've watched the video. Mm -hmm. People that are from Richmond that have left, they're ready to come home. Mm -hmm. um, we have some New Yorkers that have hit me that are like, I see myself in Richmond. That's big. That that's powerful. That you know we can take ownership of something and and spread that across these other states and at least have you come visit once. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last question. I'm slightly controversial. Mm -hmm. okay. Name and anybody can take this. Um, name three places in Richmond that you can find on the Black RBA site that you would take a first time visit. Mm. <laughs> Y'all gonna start off? Y'all go. Okay. Um, <laughs> the first thing we're doing is we're definitely going to the Maggie Walker statue and then we're going through her mansion. Mm. Um, and I'm eating probably all in Jackson Ward. I'm gonna take them here first for some coffee. Then I'm gonna go to Mama J's for lunch. Then I'm gonna go to Southern Kitchen for dinner. And then I'll probably end up having drinks. Um, if I might go out to Spoon Bread or somewhere out um, far to, to have drinks. Um, and then hopefully one of the art galleries is open as well and um, I can catch some of um, the black art around here or go to um, uh, Allegra Folklore Society and get all of it in. I'm going with her. <laughs> 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 and to the Black History Museum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black History yeah. Museum, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long day. <laughs> yeah, it's a long Way more than you can fit in a day yeah. or even a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.